Sun Fairy Stories by Evelyn Sharp. The Weird Witch of the Willow Herb. The Weird Witch of the Willow Herb lived in a pink cottage on the top of a hill. She was merry and beautiful and wise and kind, and she was all dressed in pink and green. She had great eyes that were sometimes filled with laughter and sometimes with tears, and her round soft mouth looked as though it had done nothing but smile for hundreds and hundreds of years. Her pink cottage was the most charming place in the world to live in. The walls were made of the flower of the willow herb, and the roof was made of the green leaves, and the floors were made of the white down, and the little lattice windows were cobwebs, spun by the spiders who live in fairyland, and made the windows for the fairy queen's own palace. And no one but a wimp or a fairy could have said how long the weird witch of the willow herb had been living in her cottage at the top of the hill now any one might think that this wonderful witch was so sweet and so wise that all sorts of people would be coming all day long to ask her to help them for of course that is what a witch is for but this particular witch who lived in her pink cottage on the top of the hill had not been living there all that time for nothing if i did not keep a few spells lying about at the bottom of the hill i should never have a moment's peace chuckled the witch of the willow herb and that is why most people who came to ask for her spells never got so far as the pink cottage at all for they found what they wanted at the bottom of the hill and no doubt that saved everybody a great deal of trouble poor people said the weird witch with her voice full of kindness why should i make them climb up all this way just to see me sometimes however it did happen that someone got to the top of the hill or else it is clear that this story would never have been written for one day as the witch sat on the doorstep of her pink cottage looking out over the world with her great eyes that saw everything the little princess winsome came running up the white path that twisted round and round and up and up until it reached the cottage at the top and she did not stop running until she stood in front of the weird witch herself she looked as though she must have come along in a great hurry for she had lost one of her shoes on the way and there was quite an important scratch on her dimpled chin but of course it is difficult to walk sedately when one is going to call on a witch i am princess winsome she announced as soon as she had breath enough to speak to be sure you are smiled the weird witch who knew that before and you have run away from home because because i want to find the bravest boy in the world interrupted the princess who never liked to let any one else do the talking are they all cowards in your country then asked the witch oh no answered princess winsome the boys in my country are so brave that it is no fun playing with them they stop all the games by fighting about nothing at all and it's dreadfully dull when you're a girl isn't it perhaps it is smiled the witch then why are you looking for the bravest boy of all ah said the little princess wisely the bravest boy of all would never fight unless there was a reason you see and so we should have lots of time to play but how am i to find him the only way to find him is to let him find you said the weird witch and the best thing i can do for you is to shut you up in the middle of an enchanted forest where no one but the bravest boy in the world would ever come to find anyone now make haste or you won't get there in time and the princess with the scratch on her chin must certainly have made haste for she had quite disappeared by the time that the witch's next visitor came up the winding white path and that happened the very next minute this time it was a boy who came along a tall strong jolly-looking boy with his hands in his pockets and his cap at the back of his head whistling a strange wild tune that was made up of all the songs of all the birds in the air so that as he whistled it every bird for miles around stopped to listen i am kit the coward he said pulling off his cap to the witch to be sure you are smiled the weird witch who knew that too and you have run away from home because the other boys called you a coward and you want to show them that you are as brave as they are only you won't fight without a reason isn't that it of course it is answered kit who liked to have his talking done for him but how shall i find something worth fighting about that is not difficult 
said the weird witch all you have to do is go to the court of king hurlyburly and ask him to give you something brave to do the king is always going to war about something so you will soon have as much fighting as you want now be off with you or else someone will get there before you all right said kit which is the way any way you like laughed the weird witch but in what direction asked kit it doesn't matter laughed the weird witch so kit made her another bow and marched away again down the hillside whistling the same tune as before and all the birds of the air came flying along when they heard it and they flew in front of him to show him the way and he followed them over meadows and streams and orchards and cornfields until they brought him to the walls of king hurlyburly's city and they would not have left him then if he had not pointed out to them most politely that although it was very obliging of them to have come so far with him he would find it a little inconvenient to travel any farther with so many companions so they flew away again and kit marched into the city and up to the gates of the king's palace i have come to fight for the king said kit when the guards came out and asked him what he wanted and he looked such a fine strong fellow that they took him at once to the king you have come in the very nick of time said king hurlyburly for the commander-in-chief of the royal forces has overslept himself so often that i had him beheaded this morning before he was awake the army is in consequence without a head as well as the commander-in-chief so if you will become their general and invade the country of my neighbor king topsy-turvy i shall be much obliged to you why have i got to invade the country of king topsy-turvy demanded kit the king pushed his crown on one side which he always did when he felt puzzled now you come to mention it he said i believe there was a reason but for the life of me i can't remember what it was however the reason is of no importance oh yes it is interrupted kit i can't possibly fight without a reason you know that's awkward said king hurlyburly perhaps the army will know and he sent a message around to the barracks to ask the soldiers why they were going to war but although the soldiers were all ready to begin fighting they had not the least idea what the war was about so the king's crown became more crooked than before won't it do if you invent a reason he asked kit for he could not help thinking how nice it would be to stay at home while his soldiers were being led to war by someone else you may marry the princess winsome if you come back victorious he added as an afterthought but kit only shook his head he had never heard of the princess winsome and he was not going to fight anybody without a very good reason for it then king hurlyburly had a brilliant idea go and declare war on the enemy to begin with he said and perhaps they will remember the reason there was certainly no harm in declaring war so kit rode off at once on one of the king's fastest horses and arrived the next morning at the court of king topsy-turvy just as his majesty was sitting down to breakfast i have come from king hurlyburly to declare war said kit who always went straight to the point for what asked king topsy-turvy i don't know said kit that's what i want you to tell me the king ate two eggs before he replied well he said presently i believe i said hurlyburly was a shocking old muddler i suppose that's it all right when do you want to begin i don't want to begin at all answered kit why did you say he was a muddler oh just to make conversation said king topsy-turvy helping himself to marmalade then you really don't think he is an old muddler asked kit dear me no said king topsy-turvy i never think then write that down on a piece of paper and there needn't be a war at all cried kit the king stroked his beard perhaps there needn't he agreed but i never write i do though said kit who had learned to write while all the other boys were making catapults you've only got to sign your name here king topsy-turvy stopped eating his breakfast just long enough to sign the beautiful apology kit had written on a sheet of notepaper and then kit jumped on his horse again and rode back to the palace of king hurlyburly well said his majesty did you discover the reason there wasn't any reason and there isn't going to be a war answered kit and he held out the beautifully written apology from king topsy-turvy what cried his majesty in alarm 
do you mean to say you've stopped the war of course i have said kit and i have come back victorious as you see didn't you say something about a princess but stammered the king how am i going to appease the army the army has set its heart on a war so had i answered kit sadly but i can never find anything worth fighting about meanwhile where is the princess you have not won the princess said king hurlyburly who was now thoroughly cross i believe you are a miserable coward that is what the other boys say answered kit smiling it is not my fault that there is nothing to fight about will you please send for the princess the princess has run away from home so i can't send for her said the king irritably she is shut up in an enchanted forest and surrounded with wild beasts and magic spells and giants it is not at all a nice place for a princess to be in but how am i to get her away why exclaimed kit laughing here is something for your army to do let it go and rescue the princess nothing would induce the army to go near the place explained the king sorrowfully the army is too much afraid of being bewitched hurrah shouted kit laughing more than ever at last i have found something brave to do i will go and rescue the princess so kit the coward started out on his travels once more and no sooner did he get outside the city gates than he began to whistle his wonderful tune and down swept all the birds of the air in hundreds and they flew in front of him as before and led him to the very edge of the enchanted forest there they left him for no one can help anybody go through an enchanted forest and kit knew fast enough that he must find the princess by himself he was not a bit afraid though and he plunged straight into the wood without looking back he had not taken two steps before he had completely lost himself the trees were so thick overhead that not a streak of sunshine was able to get through and the forest was so full of wild beasts that it was impossible to walk five yards without tumbling over a lion or a bear but this did not frighten kit at all for he had learned to talk the language of the woods all the time that the other boys were knocking one another on the head and soon he made friends with every animal in the forest and they told him the best places to find apples and nuts and blackberries and the bees brought him the very best honey they could make and he grew so happy and so contented that he quite forgot that he was enchanted and could not escape if he wanted to but it is impossible to be happy for long when one is bewitched and one day kit found himself in a part of the forest that was more horrible and more frightening than any dark passage that was ever invented on the way to any nursery it was not only dark but it was strangely silent as well and a curious feeling of gloom and unhappiness suddenly crept over kit if it had been a nice sort of silence the sort we find when we get away from the other boys and girls into a place where it is quiet enough to hear the real sounds of the air kit would still have been quite happy but here there was nothing to be heard at all not even the brushing of the leaves nor the blooming of the flowers nor the growing of the grass but the most frightening thing of all was when he clapped his hands together and stamped as hard as he could on the ground for not a sound did he make and when he tried to speak he found he could only whisper and when he burst out laughing he made no more noise than if he had been smiling still he kept his wits about him for of course there was the princess to be rescued and at last he thought of trying to whistle at first he could not make a note sound in the stillness but he went on trying until the wonderful tune he had learned long ago from the birds themselves began to echo once more through the silent forest he did not get an answer at once for really nice birds cannot be expected to go out of their way to a place where there is no sunshine and the flowers cannot enter into conversations with them but after a while a very fat blackbird who certainly had impudence enough for anything came hopping along from branch to branch until he landed on kit's shoulder and with him came sunshine and sound and merriment into the very heart of the melancholy forest for none of these things are ever far off when a blackbird is near kit gave a shout of joy and hastened after the blackbird who was hopping along the ground in front of him 
and the next minute he found himself standing in a blaze of sunlight in front of a high stone wall beyond the wall he could see the tall towers of a great castle but he did not trouble himself much about the other side of the wall for on top of it with the sunshine pouring all over her sat the most charming little girl he had ever seen she had lost one of her shoes and there was the faintest sign of a scratch on her round dimpled chin and her long black hair flowed around her shoulders in a way that some people might have called untidy but kit was sure directly he saw her that she had come straight out of fairyland and he was too amazed even to make her a bow dear me what are you doing here asked the girl in a tone of great surprise kit took a step nearer the wall and pulled off his cap her voice reminded him that although she belonged to fairyland she was still a little girl and would expect him to remember his manners i have come to rescue the princess he said can you tell me where she is she lives in the castle over there answered the girl what are you going to do when you have rescued her well i suppose i shall ask her to marry me said kit do you think she will oh she replied gravely that depends on whether you have my permission tell me who you are to begin with i'm kit the coward he said simply and he stared when she broke into the merriest peal of laughter imaginable what nonsense she cried if you were a coward you would have never got here at all is that true asked kit eagerly then do you think the princess will marry me the girl looked down at him for a moment with her untidy little head on one side then she bent and held out her two hands to him i think perhaps the princess will she said softly if you will help me down from this enormous high wall we will go and ask her so kit lifted her down from the wall which was quite an easy matter for it was in reality no higher than he was and the little girl was certainly the lightest weight he had ever held in his arms what are you looking for he asked when he had set her down on the ground for she was kneeling down and turning over the dry leaves in a most distressed manner i am looking for my crown of course she said with a pout it tumbled off my head just before you came and i was too frightened to jump all that long way to find it here it is said kit and he picked up the little glittering crown and set it gently on the top of her beautiful rumpled hair then he started back in surprise you're the princess he shouted of course i am laughed princess winsome putting her hand in his i knew that all the time shall we go home now kit did not reply immediately for no one can do two things at once and it took him quite a long time to kiss the small soft hand that lay in his own big one and as for going home when they did start they did not get very far for it must not be forgotten that they were still in an enchanted forest and it is easier to get into an enchanted forest than to get out of it again however as they had everything in the world to talk about they would probably have been most annoyed if they had found their way instead of losing it so they just went on losing it as happily as possible until they could not walk another step because an immense giant was occupying the whole of the roadway there he sat smoking a great pipe that looked like a chimney-pot that wanted sweeping and when the princess saw him she was so frightened that she hid herself behind kit and peeped under his arm to see what was going to happen hello said the giant and a huge voice that made the grass stand on end with fright just as it does after a hoar-frost what's this you're running away with the princess to be sure i am said kit and if you don't let me pass i shall have to kill you oh dear sighed the giant raising a wind that made the trees shiver for miles around they all say that and there's no peace for a poor giant nowadays when i was a boy the prince was always put under a spell as well as the princess however i suppose i must make an end of you if you're determined to fight and he laid down his pipe and rose most unwillingly to his feet kit laughed out loud with gladness for at last he had found a good reason for a fight and no one would be able to call him a coward any more but before there was time to strike a single blow the giant gave a loud howl of alarm took to his heels and in another moment was completely out of sight 
kit turned in amazement to his little princess and then he saw what had frightened the giant for all the animals of the forest all the lions and the tigers and the bears and the wolves stood there in rows waiting to help him so there is no doubt that that the giant would have been killed by somebody if he had not run away isn't it wonderful said the princess in a whisper but kit covered his face with his hands it is no use he said in a disappointed tone the other boys will never believe that i am not a coward princess winsome came and pulled his hands away and laughed softly i think you are the bravest boy in the world she said of course he is chuckled a voice somewhere near how stupid some people are to be sure and there sat the weird witch under a tree all in her pink and green gown with her gray eyes brimful of fun and nonsense and as the boy and girl stood hand in hand before her and caught the glance of her beautiful witch's eyes all sorts of muddles fell out of their heads and they began to understand everything that had been puzzling them for years and years and years that only shows what a witch can do when she's the right sort of witch dear little princess cried kit it doesn't matter whether the other boys believe me or not so long as you know i am not a coward besides added princess winsome we are not going to try to make anybody believe anything i think we will stay here instead for ever and ever and always a very good idea smiled the weird witch of the willow herb as she nodded at them both always remain enchanted if you can so they had the nicest and the funniest wedding possible on the spot and there was no time wasted in sending out invitations for all the guests were already waiting there in rows with the exception of the singing birds and kit very soon summoned them by whistling a few notes of his wonderful tune the princess laid her own wedding breakfast under the trees and the wedding guest helped her by bringing her everything that was nice to eat in the forest such as roasted chestnuts and preserved fruits and truffles and barley sugar cane and lots of dew drops and honey drops and pear drops and the weird witch completed the feast by turning a piece of rock that nobody wanted into a wedding cake and every one will agree that it is better for a rock to turn into a wedding cake than for a wedding cake to turn into a rock and all the flowers came of their own accord and arranged themselves on the table which they certainly did much more prettily than any one else could have done it for them and when the wedding was over they just walked away again instead of stopping until they were dead which of course is what they would have done at any other wedding and although the bride had lost her other shoe by the time she was ready to be married and although her beautiful hair was more untidy than ever and her crown had tumbled off again and had to be brought to her by an obliging lion kit never noticed any of these things and only felt quite certain that he was marrying somebody who had come right out of fairyland and was not an ordinary princess at all no doubt it was because he was in an enchanted forest that he made such a mistake and no doubt it is because he has never been disenchanted since that he is making the same mistake to this day as for the weird witch of the willow herb she went back to her pink cottage on the top of the hill so as to be ready to make the next person happy who came up the white winding path but before she went she took care that all the singing birds should fly back to kit's home and tell the other boys how brave he had been which they did with the greatest pleasure imaginable it is said that the story became slightly exaggerated but when we know how much one little bird can tell it is not difficult to imagine the kind of story that could be told by hundreds and hundreds of little birds end of the weird witch of the willow herb 